fucking eye. Little speck, little spark. Me. Begin to describe immensity. The infinitude. The imminent. Finite. The motion between the infinite and the finite. The vibration humming, um, buzzing, whirling, churning, turning, creation on its axis. How can I capture this immensity in a bubble and present it as the absolute truth? to someone external to myself through means of the intellect and mind and voice. How can something which is beyond the limit of the senses, beyond the limit of the intellect, beyond the limit of anything that we can imagine with our minds, how is it that something which is so utterly beyond can be made into such a hokey pokey kind of childish dogma and called a religion like New Age, like Hinduism, like Gaudiya Vaishnavism, like any other great saints and sages clothe the mystic naked rose in the tears of their ecstasy. And this naked truth is given form through the beautiful lips of an awakened saint and a religion is formed around him. But this religion was just the form of that saint. Whether it be Hinduism, which is the form of the Saint Vedavyas, whether it be Christianity, which is the form of the Saint Jesus, whether it be Islam, which is the form of the Saint Muhammad, whether it be New Age, which is the forms of the, the you know, the semi and Saint Lee, Helena Blavatsky, or, you know, some of these other New Age beginning figures, Aleister Crowley and Uspensky and Gurdjieff and the whole gang there in the early 1900s, whether it be new religion, old religion, these are all just the expressions of the mystic being, of the absolute truth, which was finding a proper channel into this world through the realized sage. The absolute truth is entirely personal as well as impersonal. It's only experienced through the person. And yet, it's absolute and stays the same always and is the same for everybody. It's personal at the same time as the it's different and and one at the same time. Yet still, all the outward expressions, and this is my point for this video, all the outward expressions are merely reflections in the mind, the illuminated mind of the seer. whose head cloaked in white raiment is the attractive spiritual light of God 
in the form of Shekinah, or the divine Shakti, the energy, the power. This living divine Shekinah is the true Guru. Is the true mystic. Is the true Shiva. The true infinite consciousness, which is at the same time personal and very powerful. The mind, it says in the Bhagavad Gita, can be either the friend or the foe of the living entity. If it be the friend of the living entity, then the Absolute is reflected there, purely. It's allowed to be open, it's allowed to breathe, it's universal. Only a universal mind can reflect the Absolute. Because only a universal truth can hold all other truths within. So all masters, all seers teach the universal truth called Dharma. Or the Law. a struggle between the illumined mind and the profane mind. The profane mind sees dharma in terms of separation, in terms of duality, in terms of those things, those gross things which it applies to it. The illumined mind which has a contact with the inner God, the Shekinah, holds only to the universal truth. such the mind no longer wastes its energy upon duality, material consciousness, but is drawn ever inward, ever closer into the superconscious buddhi. And when that state is attained, it becomes a superconscious knower, a buddha. That illumined mind, which is Shekinah, is that same raiment of God, the light of the Lord Himself. And this light is the guiding lantern of the hermit. This light is the star which heralds the birth of the Christ to the three wise men. This light is the pillar of salt. Which vaporizes. Superconscious illumined mind. All the prophets and all of the acharyas and gurus have been absorbed in this superconscious mind. 
And in this dharma, is just as simple, just as easy to understand as, as a child understands the moral codes of the kindergarten. Very easy, very simple. Second nature. Dharma, as you gradually are absorbed into the Shekinah, develops your actual consciousness, your actual identity into Svarup, your true spiritual form. And at this level, the superconscious mind and the spiritual Svarup, the Buddhi and the Svarup, united with the cosmic Buddhi, united with the Supreme Knower, united with God in that level. They become, you become a part of that, a part of the Supreme Buddha enters into you. That light is placed in you by the mercy of the Almighty, super conscious, almighty, supreme, infinite Param Shiva. Puts that light into you. This is it. To commune internally. Develop a relationship of deep, profound love for that internal spirit which is illuminating you. And then you can be Dharma with your whole Atma. Your Atma is absorbed into Dharma, but the mind can never know Dharma when it is not in this state of absorption or loya. And so it's utterly futile to try to know Dharma in any other way than by direct spiritual practice of expansion of consciousness and the four paths of karma, bhakti, jnana, Rajo and Laya. Only then can the absolute reality be experienced because it's above the mind. So you have to raise yourself inwardly into that level and that's what the spiritual practice does for you. Raise yourself above the lower levels, astral, lower mental, into the spiritual planes of buddhi and beyond. Only then can the absolute be tasted. Until then, there's this ex incredibly dangerous stage of being lost in dogmas and separation and duality. And presented as the absolute truth to someone external to myself through means of the intellect and mind and voice. How can something which is beyond the limit of the senses, om, buzzing, whirling, churning, turning, creation on its axis, how can I capture this immensity in a bubble? beyond the limit of the intellect, beyond the limit of anything that we can imagine with our minds, how is it that something which is so utterly beyond can be made into such a hokey pokey kind of child? The infinitude, the imminent, finite, the motion between the infinite and the finite, the vibration humming all. How can I, little speck, little spark, me, 
begin to describe immensity 